This is a continuation of section three. We want to talk about the crossed aldol reaction. Now, this figure here describes what's going on. Now, normally, when you do the aldol um, addition reaction or the aldol condensation, you are using, um, say, for example, butanol, and two identical molecules of butanol are coming together to give you one product. Now, in this situation, we have um, acetaldehyde and propanol, two different molecules that come together. What you have on the left, okay, is your electrophile, okay? And on the right, you have the nucleophile. The nucleophile is negatively charged, and that's going to be the thing that attacks the carbonyl carbon of your electrophile. And due to the randomness and the statistical combination of things, there are four different possible reactions that you can have. And so this just gives you a horrid reaction mixture and it's completely useless, okay? So you don't want to just run a crossed aldol or a mixed aldol reaction without some control. Let me show you how you do controlled crossed aldol reactions. So control the crossed aldol uh, reactions. One way to do this is to take an aldehyde that has alpha hydrogens and take some kind of aldehyde or ketone or something that does not have any alpha hydrogens. So this has no alpha hydrogens, okay? It's not acidic. So if we treat this with sodium hydroxide, we are going to get a deprotonation here. So this is going to become the nucleophile. And this has no choice but to be the electrophile. And you're going to get this product as a result. Let me take you through the curved arrow reaction mechanism just to reinforce the concepts we've learned uh, previously, okay? So we have hydroxide that comes in and it forms the enolate. This enolate is the nucleophile and it's going to attack the carbonyl carbon of formaldehyde here. Okay. When that occurs, you're going to form an alkoxide. So to get the neutral beta hydroxy aldehyde, you need to then protonate your alkoxide with the reaction solvent, which I'm assuming is water in this case, okay? So the reaction mechanism is still DAP. Deprotonation, attack, then protonation, okay? There are other molecules that n have no um, alpha hydrogens, and an example of that, so we talked about formaldehyde, okay? That can only be the electrophile. Benzaldehyde also has no alpha hydrogens, okay? There's no hydrogens here at the alpha carbon. That's, that carbon has four bonds, so there's no hydrogens there. So benzaldehyde and formaldehyde can be used very efficiently in crossed aldol reactions. So if I have, um, let's do butanol, and I treat this with benzaldehyde, okay? and I add uh, sodium hydroxide, and we're gonna do heat this time. So recall that when you have heat, you want to dehydrate the alcohol to give you the alkene, okay? So in figuring out what happens, this is gonna be the nucleophile at that carbon and this carbon right here of the carbonyl is going to be the electrophile, okay? So we're going to get um, 
not the beta hydroxy aldehyde. We're going to get this as an intermediate, okay? So we have carbon-carbon bond forming reaction between the two dotted carbons. And then remember that under sodium hydroxide and heat, you lose water and you get a double bond between the alpha and the beta carbons. So this is going to give us um, this molecule here. And you might not be um, aware of you know, where the phenyl group is. Is it going to be to the left or to the right? Pick a direction. Um, I'll pick to the right, okay? It's hard to predict uh, stability here without some more information as to what's more stable, the E or the Z, okay? So this is a uh, possible product here, okay? This is an alpha-beta unsaturated aldehyde, okay? So that's one way to control the reaction. Use a component that has no alpha hydrogens, such as formaldehyde, or benzaldehyde. A second way to control the reaction is to use what we call a directed aldol reaction. Okay? And we can do this with aldehydes or ketones, but let's just show this. So let's say I want to do this uh, reaction between um, these two, okay, and I want to selectively get just one of those four possible products, okay? So we could form products one through four if we just use sodium hydroxide, and this was illustrated in that figure in the very first slide of this lecture. So. LDA is used as a directing agent, so it's a two-step procedure. So if I take this aldehyde and I treat this with uh, LDA, which is lithium diisopropyl amide, this is usually done in THF at low temperatures, okay? You're going to get the enolate, okay? That's going to be sitting around in the reaction mixture ready to go, okay? Then what you do, so that's the nucleophile, okay? That's the nucleophile. And then what you do is you add in your second reactant. In this case, we want to add in propanol. So step two, we add in propanol, okay? And this, I'll change to a green so you can see it better. This nucleophilic carbon, okay, the nucleophile here, is going to attack this carbonyl carbon. So what you're going to get at the end is going to be, I'll put my two dots on, this, on the product here so you can see what's happening. So we have OH going this way and an ethyl group going that way, okay? So this is the beta hydroxy aldehyde, okay? The aldol product, all right? So uh, that's, that's how you do this uh, reaction. Sometimes when you see an aldol and they ask you how to make it, you break it apart and, if, and you see if the two parts are the same aldehyde, you can just do a standard aldol condensation or an aldol addition. If the two aldehydes are different, you might have to do a directed aldol reaction, okay? So we'll take a look at that in, in a bit here, okay? So, um, Let's do problem 23 in the book. Okay, problem 23 says, identify the reagents necessary to produce each of the following compounds via an aldol reaction. So we're going to use what I call the WTF analysis, okay? So step one, recopy your whole molecule, but write out the alkoxide. Okay, so we're thinking backwards. So take your complete and very large whole molecule here and write out um, the alkoxide, okay? 
And then step two is to think about the retroaldol reaction. Okay, this reaction is in equilibrium. And so now what we want to do is we want to draw that uh, mechanism. We want to fragment, okay? And the way you do that is uh, you identify the alpha and the beta carbons here, okay? And you want to fragment. So you want to use a curved arrow here to think through the mechanism. This negative charge is going to form a carbonyl, and these carbon-carbon sigma bonds are going to be pushed onto this alpha carbon. And that's, that's a retro aldol, which means it's an oppositely, you know, moving reaction. But this is going to give you uh, this enolate, which is our nucleophile. And this is going to give us, you know, something that looks like this. It looks weird, so I'll draw in the H's. And now you can see that that's formaldehyde. Okay? So this right here is a ketone. This right here is an aldehyde. So now we know what um, components to use to uh, synthesize the desired uh, molecule. So we're going to take the ketone, okay? And we could use LDA, for example, okay? Especially for ketones, LDA is, is good for a directed aldol reaction. But we don't need to worry about this because that's the only component that has alpha hydrogens. So I'm just going to add sodium hydroxide, okay, which is aqueous, and it's going to be in the presence of formaldehyde. So I'll just write CH2O under the arrow. And this will give me this molecule right here, which I'm calling the target molecule, okay? Molecule B, we want to use the WTF method once again. So we're going to write out the alkoxide. So here it is, O minus, okay? And we're going to think about this. We want to label the alpha and the beta carbons, and then we want to fragment, okay? Fragment the molecules. So take this negative charge, create a, a carbonyl, and kick these electrons onto the alpha carbon, okay? That's going to give us the enolate of cyclohexanone, okay? And on the right, we're going to have an aldehyde with this uh, six-membered ring and a methyl group, okay? Now, this molecule has no alpha hydrogens, and cyclohexanone does have alpha hydrogens, right? There's H's right here and here and here and here and here. So what we can do is do a... Uh, a very controlled um, crossed aldol reaction. So we can take um, cyclohexanone in the presence of our aldehyde. In sodium hydroxide and uh, water. Okay, so that'll give us the reaction products. I'll call it the target molecule, okay? In part C, we again want to use the WTF analysis. So we're going to write out the alkoxide. Okay, we're going to think about this. Let's label the alpha carbons and the beta carbons. And then we want to fragment the alkoxide. So create a carbonyl, okay? and then move the electrons to the alpha carbon. And what we will get is the enolate of cyclohexanone, and we will get a ketone that looks like that, okay? So cyclohexanone, of course, is a neutral molecule. It looks like this, okay? Now, there's a situation here because these, uh, both of these ketones have alpha hydrogens, okay? I'll draw them in here so you can see that there's going to be like a bunch of different molecules that could be formed from this. We want this molecule to be the nucleophile, so we're going to start with the ketone called cyclohexanone, 
and we're going to treat this with LDA. Okay, LDA. Step two will be then react it with this ketone. So that one has to act as the electrophile. Okay, and don't forget we need a uh, water workup for this, and that's going to give us the target molecule. Okay. Let's do all of these problems here. Now, in this problem, we don't have a beta hydroxy ketone or a beta hydroxy aldehyde. So we have to do a little bit more writing when we do the WTF analysis. We want to take our starting material and we want to think about the um, beta hydroxy ketones and aldehydes can undergo a dehydration reaction. So we want to make sure that we write a hydroxyl group at the beta carbon. Okay, so if you have a double bond in conjugation with your ketone, um, draw the beta hydroxy aldehyde. Then follow the normal WTF analysis, which is to write out the alkoxide. Think and fragment, so here's the alpha carbon, here's the beta carbon. So these electrons are going to form a carbonyl, and these electrons are going to point or end up on the alpha carbon. So we form the enolate of cyclopentanone, and we form benzaldehyde, okay? Cyclopentanone is, of course, a neutral molecule. So because this component has no alpha hydrogens, we can do a very controlled crossed aldol reaction. We can take cyclohexanone. We can treat this with uh, sodium hydroxide in the presence of water. And then we can add, um, I'm running out of space here, but both of these can be mixed in directly. Benzaldehyde, okay, can be added in. You, you could write it below the arrow if you want, or you could write you know, right, right next to it and put a plus sign, however you want to indicate the reaction. This will give you uh, the target molecule. Oh, I am forgetting one thing. Remember that this is a dehydration to give you an alkene, so we need to add heat, okay? So I'll put a little triangle right next to the water there to make sure we use heat, okay? Let's do part E, which is the last uh, part on this problem. So once again, we use the WTF analysis. Let's write out the alkoxide. Let's think about this. So you want to label the alpha carbon, right? That's always the carbonyl. And I'm sorry, adjacent to the carbonyl and the beta carbon, okay? And so now you want to fragment. So these electrons can come down here to create a carbonyl. And these electrons can go up here to create the enolate, okay? So we form the enolate of acetophenone and we form acetaldehyde, okay? Acetophenone, of course, is a neutral molecule. And you can see here that we have the same problem that we've ex experienced before. Acetaldehyde has alpha hydrogens, and so does benzaldehyde, okay? Both of these molecules have alpha hydrogens. So we need to direct this uh, reaction we want this to be the nucleophile, right? It's negatively charged. So we start with that. So we start with benzaldehyde. I'm sorry, acetophenone. Wrong compound. We start with acetophenone. Okay, that's a CH3 group there. And we want to treat this with LDA. Okay. Step two, we want to add in acetaldehyde. And water workup, that's going to give us the target molecule. Okay. So that's a little bit about um, how you do that type of problem, okay? Directed aldol reactions are pretty cool, and LDA has a very special uh, use for that. Um, sometimes you can get uh, intramolecular uh, cyclization, okay? 
and these are called intramolecular aldol reactions and so I should talk about that now since it's in this section okay so if you have a molecule like this and you treat this with sodium hydroxide and heat you get a cyclic product okay so how is how is that working how is that happening okay well this molecule is symmetrical. The left side and the right side are the same. So I'm going to pick on the left side here. Here's an alpha hydrogen. Okay. There's also alpha hydrogens here, here, and here. Okay. But let's see what happens, and I'll describe to you why this occurs in the fashion it does. Okay. So we can deprotonate here, and that makes the enolate of this ketone, okay? So this is an enolate. Now remember that the enolate is a nucleophile because there's a negative charge on a carbon atom, and the carbonyl right here is an electrophile because it's electron deficient, it's polar, and so on, okay? So that dotted nucleophilic carbon is going to attack that dotted electrophilic carbon in an intramolecular fashion. So intra means within, okay? It's within the same molecule, so it forms a ring. So if this attacks, okay, what do you form? Let's count it out, okay? So two, three, four, five. That's a five membered ring. Now, keeping track of which atom is where is kind of confusing, so that's why I number things, okay? Just number it one, two, three, four, five, okay? And it doesn't matter where you position these numbers on the ring as long as, you know, you go systematically clockwise or systematically counterclockwise, okay? And then draw what you have, okay? So once again, uh, carbon 1 has that dot on it. Carbon 5 has that dot on it, okay? What is attached to carbon 1? A methyl group, okay? There's a CH3 right here, right? So you want to draw a CH3. There's also an oxygen, right? There's the electrons moving out to the oxygen, so it's going to be O minus, okay? Carbon 2 just has hydrogens. We don't need to draw these, but this might be very confusing, so I'll draw them. Carbon 3 has hydrogens, right? Carbon 4 has uh, the ketone, right? And carbon 5 is just going to be an ordinary carbon atom, okay? So, if we look carefully at what we have here, we have a beta almost hydroxy ketone. Okay? We, of course, are going to have water in the reaction mixture. That's going to protonate the alkoxide. Okay? And we're going to end up with a double bond here between the alpha and beta hydrogens, okay? So this is going to go on to give us this final product with the loss of uh, water when it dehydrates under the action of heat, okay? Base and heat. So that's an intramolecular reaction. Now, five-membered rings and six-membered rings are the most favorable uh, ring size, okay? So uh, now we'll move on to uh, talk about um, uh, section four. Okay, thanks for watching.